In this video, you're going to learn how to make a drop dead gorgeous concrete countertop. D I Y. Let's do this. So indeed, in this video, we are going to show you how to make a concrete countertop, but we are going to be giving you so much more. Now, as a full heads up, the whole video is skippable. We've titled it all down for your viewing pleasure. And if you're in a hurry and you want to just get straight to the instructional, well, jump on ahead. But let me tell you why you don't want to do that. First off, we are giving away this house that we are building. We're building this house for free and giving it away for free. So stick around and you're going to learn how you can enter to win. Two. We have an incredible story about how we go about doing this. We got drama, we got intrigue, we got dragons. Maybe not dragons, we'll see. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and jump into the story about how we got to building these concrete countertops. Last time, we lost our shop. We had to pivot. Instead of sitting and twiddling our thumbs, we decided to take the tiny house to our concrete artisan, Simon of Phoenix Concrete Works. And he does lightweight concrete countertops. And we want lightweight because we're on wheels. Plus, we'd love to have some customization and some really cool features. This house is about showing off amazing technology. So we're using these glass rice krispies called Parava in the concrete mix to lower the weight. And we've got Unicon supplying materials so we can do some pretty amazing work. Now that the tiny house is here, we're going to go outside here in a moment and we're going to template it. Then once we get that template in, we're going to set it up on our casting table here, cut our pieces and strips to hold the concrete in when it's wet, mix our ingredients, set everything under some blankets so that it cures properly. After that, process it and seal it and then move it on into your tiny house. And welcome to your featured ad spot. We're trying something different this time around. Instead of putting a YouTube commercial, we're gonna talk about tiny homes. So here's some questions for you. Are you sick of paying rent, paying off someone else's mortgage? Are you fed up with owning a house, but being completely house poor? Do you want to dramatically increase the quality of your life? Do you want to travel more? Do you want to work less? Do you want to own cute things? Or you can even rent it and get some money makes a great rental income, then you might want to consider going tiny and living more with less. There's way too much to teach. This is exactly why we made a tiny house workshop. And we also have an online workshop. So you can take the workshop from the comfort of your slippers, pajamas, and hoodie. In the workshop, we teach things like heat. Things like water. Things like power. And everyone's favorite topic, Toilets. All the utility systems for how to make a house work, make it efficient and resilient, and save you your hard-earned money every single month. We also teach the steps of construction. How do you build a house step-by-step, step, right from the ground up? And we also teach all of the space-saving and design variables to how to making one of these homes work as a perfect representation of your needs and wants. If you're interested in learning more, make sure to check out the information that'll be down in the description down below. Like I said, we got live and in-person workshops coming up. All right, back to the show. All right, here are the steps. Simon's given me a, a sneak peek of what I'm in store for. I'm gonna grab my camera and follow him around and you get to see all the steps as he does them in front of us. Basically what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our template is going to fit all the way across the entire space and make sure that we're gonna take into account how the walls are bowed and go from there. So when I take this into the shop, and I set it back on the table. This is going to give me my point of reference so that these pieces go back together the same way that they came apart when I took them out of here. Over here, there's a very small gap that's in the wall. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna hot glue some pieces in along to close that gap to keep everything as form-fitting as we can. Step two, building the form. There is actually quite a bit to this. And there's different ways of going about it, but I'll share with you how Simon does his. He's got a specialty pouring table that he's made for the job and it is completely level. That's a great place to start. You can use car wax to prepare that surface 
to actually have a release. And you can use MDF, which you cut, as a border perimeter. Use double-sided construction tape to adhere it to your table. And you can use silicone, which you put into all the corners of your mold. And that way you've got a rounded corner for your countertop. What is a form and why do we need it and how are we going to go about it? Basically, we're going to build a mold that goes all the way around our templates that we've done to hold the concrete in place so that it has a form to shape too. So we're going to stick that down into place and go around the perimeter and that's what's going to hold it all together. And then we pour the concrete mix in. Awesome. Step three, mixing your concrete. First one is we used a product called Paraver. It's a glass Rice Krispie, expanded glass. And it allows us to get our weight down on these concrete countertops. We lose around 30, 40% of the weight, which is fantastic for being on wheels. 45% lighter than a quartz countertop. So that's pretty amazing. The other additive you gotta make sure to put in is fibers. And they have to be AR fibers, alkaline resistant fibers. And that allows them to provide structural strength, but not deteriorate. My third tip for mixing up your concrete is make sure you have a good drill. So we made sure we got a great drill from Unicon, double paddle mixer. Uh, and that way we're not wasting time hand mixing it and having an inconsistent mix, which is probably one of the number one issues when you go making your own concrete mix. All right, we got our template, we got our form, and we're now ready to get to mixing. And I'm excited, you've got quite a few ingredients here. So we're gonna be creating a mix here that's going to be lighter for the tiny house. Mm. And we're gonna be substituting some of our sand with some po raver. Unicon was gracious enough to donate the rest of the material, so we'll, we'll take a look at what that's like. What's this bowl for? Okay, so what we got here is we've got fibers. We've got two different kinds of fibers because we're going to be using it in a couple of different spots. We've got a PVA fiber and we've got AR glass. So this, this AR glass is our uh, primary reinforcement that we're going to be using inside the concrete. That's what's going to be replacing what you would have in traditional concrete would be rebar. So this is going to make our concrete stronger. stronger. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's, going to, that's what's going to hold everything together. Okay, so we got our cement the base ingredient. We got our rebar, but it's a fiber. And then we've got our expanded glass to keep the weight low. That's right. What's last? So in here we've got uh, black iron oxide. Hmm. And when we weigh that out, we'll figure out what that's gonna do. And that's gonna change the color of our concrete to what we want. And we may experiment a little bit more with the colors beforehand, but the basic idea is that we wanna make our color as beautiful as possible. And then after that, then we'll be putting sealer on it after we process tomorrow. All right, let's get to mixing. Welcome to your second commercial break. Still better than a regular ad. <laughs> As you can see, I'm sitting here in our unfinished bathroom. There's a lot of work to do. We gotta get a washing machine that sits here. We gotta install the mirrors on the walls. We got an infinity mirror we wanna put in the ceiling. All these costs. So I reached out and I got a special deal for you so that we can also finish this house. I'd like to introduce you to Staten Rock Simply Living. Now Staten Rock is an emerging Canadian tiny house builder and they build to RV, park model and manufactured building codes so you can get a legal tiny house. They have offered anyone who's watching this commercial right now up to $10,000 off their models and for every single person who claims that discount, just got to mention my name, Kenton Zurban, they are going to give $5,000 to us to finish this house so we can give it away for free. Now, if you haven't yet, make sure to go and subscribe and enter the contest form. This is how you get a chance to win this house. Now, let's show you a little bit of their models because I think you're gonna be excited about what you can get and for that five to $10,000 off. First off, the Freelancer. This is a 16 foot long and eight and a half feet wide tiny house, truly tiny. They're offering $5,000 off this model and it's the perfect model. If you're looking for something that's gonna be extremely portable, wanna have as a backyard Airbnb, or just an additional suite in the backyard. Want even more space? Check out this 32 foot long model called the Outdoor Enthusiast. It comes with two entrances, one of them going into a mudroom. It also has a full kitchen complete with dishwasher. Pretty sick model, and they're offering you $10,000 off this one as well. 
Now all the models I just mentioned are all technically RVs. They're on wheels, easy to move anywhere you go. But if you don't want an RV, they also have manufactured homes and park models, like this one called the Coal Harbor. It is about 550 square feet, 44 feet long and 12 and a half wide and with three ready floor plans flexible for your choice. One with a bedroom, one with a flex room, one with an extended living room. This way, you can live tiny without it feeling tiny. I put all the information down below. All you have to do is mention my name, Kenton Zurbin, and you'll get five to $10,000 off any of those models and the others that they have on their website. Go check it out. For step four, it was really cool to mix the concrete together and push it into the mold. Simon had this amazing way to do this DIY texture. So you can see in the time lapse here, we're moving around and there's three of us, his daughter, myself and Simon, pushing in our mix. And we left air pockets intentionally against the surface of his pour table. So you push it in bit by bit and then there's gonna be all these cracks and crevices and that's what's gonna get filled with grout later on. If you're doing this yourself, it's nice to do it changing patterns, so to say, and be a little uneven. And if you have more than one person, great, because you're gonna get different patterns then. Just keep switching where you're working. So that was a really fun part of this process and how you can get a highly featured piece of concrete. Okay, polishing was definitely more work than I thought, and the grouting. So you mix up your grout. Um, we got ours from Unicon, and it's a bone white. So you mix it up and you rub it in the cracks, but the problem is it's got water in it, and as it dries, it shrinks. So you gotta knock it down with the polish, polisher, and then you gotta add another layer. And then you gotta knock it down with the polisher, and you gotta add another layer. For Simon, he told me this is a lot of work. It's great for a DIYer who's gonna go, yeah, I, uh, I got time to put into this, but be aware, you got, you got a few steps here and you got a bit of time, otherwise you're gonna have all these uneven divots when you later on have your countertop. Okay, holy crap, there's so much work to be done on this house. We got the cabinets in. Simon and I just finished test fitting the countertops on top of them. I have invited Tracy from Kitchen Craft to come see her handiwork in this kitchen all installed, but I've also invited Alaire Homes. They've done a fantastic job of installing this herringbone Harbinger vinyl flooring, and it looks fantastic. So here we go. Let's do it. Let's see how gracefully I can do this. <laughs> Yeah, having Simon do this uh, artisan countertop, it's making it too easy to make it look good, honestly. <laughs> and thank you so much, uh, Kara, for Alaire coming out and helping us with this flooring. It's a phenomenal job. And uh, as you can see, we've got just the kitchen area done. I'm like, I have to show it off. We have to show it off. <laughs> Gorgeous kitchen, right? But you want to see the rest of this house all said and done, don't you? We've got tons of work to do inside here. We got a custom couch going in behind me. We got a custom table going in. We've got a bedroom to finish. We got a mirror bathroom. We got tons of cool stuff to show you. So, we first though gotta do one thing. We gotta get the house to lock up. We can't do our finishing work without the house being one safe and temperature controlled. We've already been pushing it honestly because we've been having a space heater in here and using a drop sheet to seal off the house. We gotta build the back wall, and the back wall is something spectacular. It's a drawbridge wall. It drops down, and you walk out from the bedroom onto it. It has a motorized screen that drops down for a projector screen from inside or outside the house, and it has a bug screen. So if you want to, you can drop the wall down, drop the screen, and your bedroom could be an open air bedroom. To accomplish this amazing feat, we got Aaron from Radical Steel Fabrication. We got IB Engineering and we've got metal supermarkets. Stick around, and we're gonna show you how this house looks like all said and done, and 
that amazing drop-down wall. See you next time.